I thought I might make a quick video on a piece of homemade equipment that was designed actually for a specific project but uh, is uh, might be useful to people doing some power electronics and since I recently did some videos on power electronics I thought I would uh, continue this uh, or at least uh, talk about this little box. Now you may have seen me uh, using a little uh, intelligent electronic load for a lot of the experiments in uh, power electronics. This is certainly not an intelligent electronic load. Uh, it was intended to be a, uh, a variable load for uh, testing some uh, medium power circuits. Uh, and what, is, what it uh, consists of is a series of heat sinks. They're mounted, as you can see, on a little uh, aluminum uh, bracket that I kind of bent up. I'm not, a, I'm not a metal worker, but I do have a little bit of uh, equipment, a metal brake, and a few things like that that let me do some of these things. So uh, what I did is I mounted heat sinks here. Uh, five 50 watt resistors and I'll show you this schematic in a little bit. I put a fan in it although I realized later this probably wasn't necessary at least for the project this was built for and at one time I intended to put a top on it but I never got around to that either. But uh, nonetheless the fan is uh, you can see there running. I'll unplug it and you see it come to a stop. The uh, So what is this? Well on the front here is, uh, let me see if I can get rid of some, some of the glare. That's not, no I guess it's going to be up there. That's better. Okay, as you see, it's uh, six binding posts and uh, five switches. With each switch labeled, this is the 5 ohm, 10 ohm, 20 ohm, 20 ohm, 50 ohm. The idea being that the way this is wired, and like I say, I'll show you this schematic in a second, you can basically put all of these in series or one or more of these in series. So, for example, you can have... 5 ohms and 10 ohms to make 15, or you can have 5 and uh, and 20 and 20 to make 45, and, or 50 and 20 and 10 to make uh, 80 and so on. So, uh, and you do that with these switches. Now these are fairly large switches. I don't know how easy it is to see those down in there, but these are 20 amp uh, 230 volt switches, so they're uh, they're pretty high current, and the idea being that uh, the particular project that this was working, uh, that this was built to work with, was for a pretty high uh, current. Actually, it was only at about 100 volts, but so I didn't need the 220 volt or 250 volt uh, switches, but I did need the uh, about. 12 to 15 amp uh, rating. So let's take a look at the schematic and uh, and then we'll wrap this all up. So here's how this is wired up. It's just a series and I, I realized I, I mislabeled this one 10. These, they're actually two 20s and a 10. Uh, and each switch, well I also just realized, uh, let, me, let me fix this schematic. Okay, back again. The uh, I drew this from memory, and I <laughs> didn't do a very good job of remembering how it was built. The uh, the way this is set up, when one of these switches is closed, which is the down position, this resistor is shorted out by a 20 amp switch. When it's open, this resistor is placed in series with whatever else is uh, on there. And then each point is brought out to a binding post so that if you want to, you can put jumpers across 
various parts of this and I think you'll see that gives you a little more flexibility. But the most important thing about this is that, for example, if you put a uh, uh, lead on, in this binding post and another in this, you can adjust the resistance between this point and that point to anything from zero ohms with all the switches closed up to, I think it's 105 anyway, if you add all these up, 50 and 40 is 90, 100, yeah, 105 ohms. And these are uh, 50 watt resistors. Now they're mounted on heat sinks using heat sink compound. And I never have talked about this. I said at one time that I might uh, talk about the whole idea of heat sinks and that kind of thing. Here are some heat sinks that are used for uh, transistors, uh, TO220 actually, transistors. And here is the uh, silicone heat sink compound that I used in, the, uh, in mounting those resistors to the, to the aluminum heat sinks. So uh, I'm not going to get into thermal resistance and all of that at this point, but you basically can calculate both the uh, dissipation that this uh, circuit will absorb as well as what it will absorb when you have the heat sinks in place and when you have air flowing over them if you know the thermal resistance of the heat sinks uh, both with and without continuous airflow. So I thought it might be interesting for you to see this as an alternative to the electronic load. Now, in all honesty, by the time you buy all these components and uh, put them together with the heat sinks and all the metal and the fan and everything else, uh, switches and so on, you're actually going to spend more on this than you would on that electronic load. So, I'm not recommending that you go out and build one of these. I'm just showing it for, uh, for the sake of uh, giving you an alternative uh, because this idea of, of shorting out resistors with switches in order to obtain what is in effect a substitution, a resistance substitution box, is actually a pretty old idea. But uh, in this particular case, I used it to advantage to get a 50 watt plus uh, substitution load that I could use in some power uh, projects I was doing. So at any rate, hope you enjoyed it. Stay tuned. Stay safe.